Jason here, bloodchurch.org. God bless each and every one of you. Hope everyone is having a great day. I'm in a little bit of a traffic. So I thought I would just talk. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, thumbs up, like. And you can always join us over at uh, bloodchurch.org. I have a lot of valuable information, just links to other videos as well as just information that you might find useful in life. I'd check it out. So, wanted to talk today about, um, obviously as a Christian we're always looking forward to our, our blessed hope, our soon return of the King, and um, it's just amazing to me in this world that we live in, the beauty of the, uh, the earth that God created that uh, man does nothing but um, turn against the creator at every step. I'm going to talk about other books um, that people people claim, you know, sometimes to use in reference. Um, I sort of call them Gnostic books because they often amplify the angels. They often lift them up and try to put them on a equal or greater status than Jesus and or make them more like a deity and that's complete blasphemy and should never happen um, the only one that intercedes for us is the Lord Jesus Christ the only one that can forgive us for our sins is what Jesus did on that cross amen how he shed his precious blood if you're not saved you'd say today by the blood of Jesus Christ you can be forgiven for your sins past present future once saved always saved admit that you're a sinner put your pride aside because in these end days, we have to, um, we need to come to Him for forgiveness. It's the only way. It's a free gift. There's no nothing to do. You don't need to work. There's no works added. In fact, there's nothing needed but accepting with your heart that Jesus Christ died on a cross 2,000 years ago, was buried and raised from the dead three days thereafter, and now has ascended to the right hand of God the Father and will return for His bride. Amen. So, believe with your heart that uh, Jesus is God. He is part of the Trinity. He's also the Son of God, the begotten Son that died for you. So, one of the books that people look at, um, often reference, is the Book of Enoch. Especially when it comes, you know, to the end times and also to, the, to looking at the way the planet supposedly is, um, really, really, truly is, um, was formed and whatnot. But I'm telling you, this book should not be used. It has Gnostic written all over it. First and foremost, if you read Enoch, and now Enoch, you know, obviously is a famous uh, person in the Bible, was beloved by God, no doubt. But the book of Enoch, you can tell it was co copied from Revelation. You can see parts of Revelation, you can see parts of Isaiah. You can see other parts of the Bible as well. Copied right from it. And um, in those verses you'll find that they'll say things like the angels can be used for, for intercession. It mentions four angels in one part and one of them it mentions could be used for intercession. That's not true. Only Jesus can. So it's blasphemy. And you can just see the whole language of the book is Gnostic, Gnostic, Gnostic. Just like the the other cult religions, just like the Muslim, um, they copied parts of of the Bible or, or wrote it similar to it, it and bastardized it, just like the Book of Mormon, just like other books, it's a Gnostic book, and it is an evil book. Stay away from it. Stay away from the Dead Sea Scrolls for the same reason here to tell you that the only book we need is the KJV Bible, amen to that. So, read your Bible, get into the KJV Bible and the Word of God, and there you'll be safe, my friends. And that's the Bible for English-speaking English people. Now, if you don't speak English there, there are other Bibles that are translated from the KJV that are worth checking out. In your daily walk in life, remember the Lord Jesus died for you. Remember the, the love and the charity he gave you and, and return it to others. Um, in your workplace, in your day-to-day -day life, 
and your relationships with others, remember that um, you can be a positive force or a negative force. And always leave a positive, leave on a positive high with, with, with when you talk to somebody, of course, don't, don't send to do it, but you know, if you're having a conversation about something, stay positive, even if they're staying negative. Leave it that way. They're going to say, what's going on with this person? How is this person so positive in some of the times we live in? Or, I really enjoy talking to that person. And they'll start to see the wisdom and the way you see the world and the way you live your life. And they'll want and they'll desire that. They'll desire your calmness. They'll desire the way you look at things and the way you love others, even though maybe... Um, that person isn't always the nicest person in the office, maybe, for example. Keep in mind that the relationships that you build can be built slowly over time. And when you when you interact with people in a way that's powerful and positive and loving and caring and concerning and really truly caring about the other people and their problems, that doesn't mean go give them all your money and that doesn't mean those things. But sometimes just to listen to people. And to be there for people is all it takes. And then what you can do is God will open up a door to minister to them and their family members. Now, what do you do when you've tried and, and people aren't hearing the gospel? I, I get this question. And it's that's a tough one. Um, I think you've got to pray daily for them. I know, and it might not be you that is the one that is going to deliver home the final message of salvation. It might be, it might be somebody else. If you know other people that, um, what I would do is encourage them to to come to church, to attend Bible studies, or to watch videos maybe online of somebody um, like myself, or uh, any, there's a lot of other great evangelists as well, it doesn't have to be me. But I encourage that you bring them along and let them watch with you and then just sort of say, hey, I want your thoughts on this video. That's a great way to get someone to watch something. Um, and sort of, you know, tricking them into watching it, but... It's a great way to do it. I would recommend to not press too hard, to not drive them away. If you've given someone the message of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, or John 3, 16, and, and they're just not having it, there's no reason to keep throwing it upon them constantly. But every once in a while, I certainly would bring it up again. That, hey, I wish you would consider what I talked about and how to be saved. I, you know, I think there's no better time than today. You know, paint a little bit of a picture of urgency with the decision. There's nothing wrong with that. But you certainly don't want to drive them away. And the prayers and, 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 and praying for them continually. And and then maybe like, hey, watch this video or check this out or get them to come to a you know, Bible study if you, have, if you do have a good Bible-believing church. Maybe somebody else hits home. You know, maybe somebody else's delivery or personality is more effective than your own. And, th- and that's okay. It's... it's you, know, you didn't do anything wrong. In fact, you were loving enough to admit that maybe you weren't going to be the one to, to bring them to salvation. And, and you know what? That's that's probably better um, that you try different methods and, and avenues. But I would not give up on them either. Um, it, remember, it's your job just to give the message. It's not your job to make sure they're saved. So a lot of people get caught up in, well, geez, I'm, you know, I'm not doing a great job. That person's not saved. This person didn't hear the message. They heard the message, they just rejected the message. Remember, people are living in their sins and their carnal nature, and some people enjoy sins, and they don't want to think about being accountable for the things they've done because it's embarrassing to them. Then some of them might have a pride issue or you know, can't admit they're wrong or think that they're a righteous person and, and don't realize that damnation isn't um isn't, you know, Damnation is, I mean, they don't realize that damnation is real or they think they're just, they're good enough and they're a good enough person to be accepted by God. And they don't realize it's not about that. It's about whether you are, you know, accept the free gift of the blood of Jesus Christ. So anyway, I hope this has been a short, good message for you. Stay positive, my friends, in these last days. Continue to serve the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart. And God bless each and every one of you. I'll see you next time.